Hey guys, Level Cap here and welcome to devlog number 20 for a spaceship game that I'm making with my buddy Rich and a bunch of help from the community. I am very excited today to show off a cool new weapon that we just got into the game. It's been a while since we've been able to make a new weapon. It's in as rough an alpha state as it could possibly be, but I'm really excited to show it off. All right, so this is our pirate battle cruiser, and we've got a little spinny disc thing that's flickering at the moment on top of the ship. Not supposed to be flickering. Again, alpha state. Gonna fix a few things soon. But this is a centrifugal beam weapon. It has a giant centrifuge on top, spins up some plasma, fires off a beam towards enemy ships in the distance. So I've just spawned in our destroyer here. You'll notice that the actual beam weapon orients itself to the direction of the destroyer. In fact, I'm gonna come around this side so you can see the front of the beam weapon. And we'll first fire it from this angle here. Charge up, no sound effects yet. There goes the beam. But these basically are going to be capital class style weapons. We might have some spinal mounted ones for destroyers at some point, but they're going to be massive beam turrets for medium to long range combat on big ships. Got a lot of balancing and stuff to do, a lot of sound effects, a lot of particle effects to update with these things. But this was something that like Rich just cracked the code on figuring out how to do it last night. And so this is the very first iteration of it. Now, this model almost certainly isn't final, but it's a good concept to begin with. Uh, the idea for the charge up effect is that these will start to glow as you start charging the weapon and start spinning faster until they become a ring kind of representing uh, heated plasma in a centrifuge spinning up faster. So that'll be a fun effect to maybe uh, show off in a future devlog. Now, last devlog, I talked about working with a new concept artist, Island, who's been just knocking it out of the park with some really cool concepts for us. He whipped up a quick one for an asteroid drone, which is basically a drone that will attach to the outside of an asteroid, giving it a thruster. And so the idea here is that you'll see some of these located on the outside of asteroids, and as we get further along in development, maybe we can animate some of them attaching on and sort of doing different things. Perhaps we can even integrate it to gameplay at a later state if we want to weaponize asteroids moving through space quickly. They might have some asteroid drones stuck onto the side of them. So this is the model that I whipped up last week based on his concept art. Uh, kind of quick through there. I'll probably do another pass on texturing at some point, but... It's fun to kind of get the concept rolling. In our world design over here, you can see I've stuck one on the side of an asteroid. Got another one over here. Um, and so at the moment, they're just set dressing things that we can add to some of our asteroid hideouts. Speaking of which, we've also got these little buoy style lights. These were another concept art by Island. Um, and I've added them to a few other places around the level. Over here, you'll see that we have a ring of them now. These are nice. These are kind of like warning lights. I'm going to actually add an extra little bit of bloom effect to them, kind of fake some bloom to increase the visual styling of it. The rings go around our nav beacon, which I showed off in last devlog. We've updated it a bit. The nav beacon now has some blinking lights on it and some sounds that Panzer V1 made. We've got a cool pulsing effect and it's got some cool ambiance as well. So I really like this sound effect that Panzer V1 has built for it. it kind of gives the idea of this being a, a, a thing that's sending a signal out that ships can lock onto as uh, being sort of a fast travel beacon in the game. Um, happy with how this is coming along. Also got some good feedback about texturing workflow in the last devlog and uh, we're making some updates to how we do things on that end, but we'll be talking about that in a future devlog. Now I've had an asteroid base in this game for a while. Potato One, I quickly gray boxed an idea for it just to get it in game so I could start playing around with the concept. And once I knew that I wanted to change it up in more significant ways, I started talking with Island about some concepts and he came up with some really cool asteroid based concepts. These are just two examples here. And I also asked him to work on some interior design. He gave me a bunch of concepts, but this is one that I started working with. And finally, I'm starting a gray box test some of this stuff in the game for new and improved hangar 
uh, setup. So I'm actually really excited about these because the hangars and the asteroids are going to be much bigger, uh, more impressive. I think flying into them and coming up to them is going to be really cool. They're going to feel much more like major locations and mission uh, destination points. So this will be a really fun way to make our world much more interesting rather than just being lots of space and asteroid rocks. There will be some really cool base uh, environments. Now there's so many things that we're working on behind the scenes from audio design to Rich recreating missile pod and weapon logic, getting it prepared for ship AI. He also started diving into some interesting input features and I kind of want to let him explain that. Hey everyone, I'm going to talk a little bit about how our input system is set up, but before I get to that, I want to give a big thanks to the community in the Discord. Uh, the last devlog, I talked about this quick and dirty system I put together for the proximity ring. It consisted of a lot of line traces every frame. As a few people accurately pointed out, that does not perform super well. To give you the details on that, um, the system I had set up between doing the math and the rendering, the whole thing for the proximity ring cost about 900 microseconds. It's almost a millisecond. And to put that in perspective, if we want 60 frames per second, we've got a little over like 16 and a half milliseconds per frame. So to use almost one of those just for this proximity ring, it's not very good. If we want 144 frames per second, we have just under seven milliseconds we can work with. And if one of those is just the proximity ring, that's unacceptable. Uh, the good news is there's lots of ways to optimize it. We can um, easily with just a little bit of work, we can quadruple the performance of that. Uh, with some more complicated work, we can get even better than that. So again, thanks to everybody in the Discord for the ideas on how to optimize that. I think this is gonna work really well in the long run. So let's talk about the input system. The example I'll talk about is the button that does two things. It fires missiles and it reloads missiles. It does one of those things depending on how long you're holding down the button. So if you just press the button and let it go, it fires a volley of missiles. If you hold down the button for more than a second, it causes a full reload of all your missile pods. The missile pods do reload automatically once they run out of missiles, but uh, you might run into a situation where you know you're low on missiles and you're about to go into a fight, so you'll force a full reload by holding down, in this case, the Y button on a Steam Deck or Xbox controller. The next step in all this is to map the actual buttons that you wanna use to the actions that you want the button to trigger. So in order to do that, we have this input mapping context set up with all these mappings. Uh, each mapping will have an actual button assigned to it, and these will be reconfigurable later on. So here we have our input action that we created, the missile controls combined, and now we've assigned an actual button to it. Gamepad face button top. So not all gamepads are laid out where there's a Y button at the top. Uh, but that's the button we want is say Y on the Xbox controller or Y on the on the Steam Deck. Now for the next step. This is our player controller that we currently have. Most of these red nodes that you see are input action events. So when the engine detects that the Y button is pressed, it starts this input action event. Let's look at it more closely here. So this event has a lot of pins that we can pull off of. These are execution pins and we got some data pins here. We're really only concerned with triggered and canceled. So triggered means it was held down past one second. So it has triggered one time. It sends a pulse down this line here and causes the reload to happen. It didn't get canceled, so it does not fire a missile volley. Or let's say I let go after 0.9 seconds. Uh, it'll never get triggered. Now it sends a pulse down the canceled route and fires a missile volley instead. It's, it's weird to think about that cancel means fire missile volley, but this is sort of the, the little bit of trickery I was talking about. And then if we're using a keyboard instead of a gamepad, we might have two different keys for reloading and firing a missile volley. So we're going to actually have two different events that we handle. That's something that we're going to worry about later. We're focused on gamepad for now. 
So as we progress towards a movement combat demo that'll help us understand whether or not the gameplay and combat is fun and how to tweak it and manipulate it from that point, I'm also working on our asset pipeline from modeling to texturing to world design functions, working with a lot of people who are helping me right now. And I'm excited to talk about some of that stuff uh, in the upcoming devlogs. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of our devlog. If you guys want to follow the project more closely, check out our Discord. It is linked in the video description. Lots of good discussions happen over there and lots of good developers helping out with suggestions and troubleshooting and stuff like that. If you want to know more about this game, check out this video here or just the whole devlog playlist if you want to catch up to speed on things. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.